I really want to talk about spores versus liquid mycelium. Whether we're talking about LCs, which are here in the still air box, liquid cultures, or slurries, which we're creating here, it's the idea of creating liquid mycelium versus working with spores. And it's actually really easy to create liquid mycelium. I wanna invite you to open your mind and experiment with different thought and ideas around spores and liquid mycelium. When you are working with spores, they're actually not the mushrooms you wanna grow. Most of the mushrooms that you're purchasing from growers, whether they're home growers like myself or commercial mushroom growers, or maybe even from your grocery store, they are growing from liquid mycelium. So this is why they're bountiful and huge fruits and beautiful. When you grow from spore, the spores have to germinate before colonizing. In this bird seed, you can see here, we have tomatose and rhizomorphic mycelium growth around this bird seed, the WBS, the grain jar. So this is colonizing in the grain. This is actually agar, not liquid culture, in this WBS because I wanted to show you all the different methods and techniques for you to be able to think through what would work best for you because you have choices here. There's so many choices actually. There's not just one way. However, when you're working with spores, it has to go through the germination then to this colonization here where you actually have mycelium. When you're working with agar, liquid cultures or slurries, you're working with mycelium. So here in these agar dishes in my WB, I mean in my SAB, the still air box, this is, this is mycelium. No spores going on here, no spores. When you're working directly with the mycelium and not the spores, you're working with more mature fruits. What a spore will produce is really small, and when we grew from spores right off, it's not what we wanted. We were actually disappointed. I mean, we grew stuff, but not what we wanted. So when we switched over to embracing this idea of agar and liquid culture and mycelium and no more working with spores where we have to go through that germination, also the germination process is lengthy. The amount of time it takes a spore to germinate is quite a while. And your grain, your WBS, whatever it is that you're working with with a grain jar or a grain bag can dry out. So you also open the door for some problems with working with spores. It is just a better way to use your time, money, and time and money is energy. And so it really is a better use of your energy, whether it's time and money, by skipping up this process with the spores and going straight to creating mycelium. And we're always looking for this rhizomorphic mycelium that looks like antlers or branches and it's always on the leading edge of where it's growing. And you can see it here. And so these jars, these bird seed jars, WBS, have been shaken when they were 30% colonized. And the husband is the one who does all of the grain jar shaking. And he says, this one is almost finished here and we're not gonna shake it again because it's looking really, really good. So when all of it is grown out white, all this rhizomorphic mycelium has been colonized, then we will move it to substrate, which is the soil, 
to colonize once again before the fruiting. So when we start at the beginning with spores or liquid mycelium, whether it's the LC, liquid culture, or the slurry that we're creating, or maybe it's not liquid at all, you're using agar transfers, which is fine too. You create the liquid culture and the slurry out of the agar plates. So you could put the agar straight to your bird seed as well or your grain, whether you're using bags of grain or jars. You can put the agar in there to grow as well as the liquid culture and the slurries. And when we have really beautiful plates and dishes, we use no pour jars here. We started with petri dishes and now we use no pour jars. You use these no pour jars to make your liquid cultures and your slurries by transferring your clones or your spores that you've grown out. And a lot of times we have beautiful plates, beautiful dishes, no pour jars, and we have so much left over once we've transferred them that a lot of times I will put this agar straight to the bird seed. So that's what I did. The plates were so beautiful, I didn't want to waste them, so I put them to bird seed. Again, you can grow your spore on these no-pour jar or petri dishes. You can put spores straight to the agar and grow them out, and you can put the agar straight into your bird seed, or you can make the liquid culture the slurries. So again, there's choices. Again, when you're working with the spore, spores are inherently dirty. They just are, even if you're getting the best spores. And if you're working with the spore prints that you created, they are dirty. There is contamination, and that's okay. The point is, you put the spores to agar, and we recommend that when you're working with spores, you do a water agar. And we have a video on water agar. It's just purified water and agar, so there's no sugars or nutrients for contamination to feed on. It's a little bit slower grow for your spores in the water agar, or you can do an incredibly light MEA. And that way you give your spores the opportunity to grow out on the agar plates. And then you can transfer those, eliminating contamination. Every time you do a transfer to a new plate, you're eliminating contamination. And then once you have these plates, that have a rhizomorphic growth, again, antlers, the branches, very white and thick, you can put those to your grain. So I wanted to show you that we actually used this grow kit when we first got started as an experiment, and we used spores. And so it's really interesting looking through the directions and kind of where we started. And we started with inoculating a bag like this. So the kit came with a syringe. However, we didn't use the syringe because we didn't have any liquid culture we didn't have any mycelium. And so what we were able to do was order liquid spores, so it's spores and liquid. So we ordered syringes of spores for all the mushrooms we wanted to grow. And at the beginning, we inoculated these grain bags through a kit. And it took so long to inoculate that grain bag. It really did, but it colonized. So we allowed it the, spur, the spores to germinate in the bag and once that colonized, then we moved it to the substrate. And once the substrate colonized, then we had fruiting conditions. And again, the spores were just not something that we wanted. So if you receive, no matter how you get your spores, whether it's in, in the liquid, in a syringe, you know, there's so many ways that spores come. And you can also make a spore print yourself with foil. So when you have a spore, no matter how you have it, 
you can simply put it to an agar dish, an agar plate, and no pour jar like we have in here, and allow your spore to grow out to mycelium. You can also clone fresh or wet fruits. That's right, you can. So no matter what mushroom you're wanting to grow, if you could get your hands on a wet, a fresh version of that, you can clone that. So whether you have the wet or fresh mushroom, you can clone. Whether you have the spores, you can turn the spores into mycelium. And that's what we recommend because you're gonna be so much happier with the fruits from mycelium. And what we've done is we have created different techniques that have worked for us. And these no pour jars are amazing. So I'm gonna create a video for you of growing mushrooms from start to finish where we discuss all your options and choices. However, I really wanted to focus this, this video on spores versus mycelium. And I don't think there's any verses about it. The spores germinate and colonize into this myce mycelium. So starting with the mycelium is the way to go. And what happens is once you have all this liquid mycelium in here, which I have in my still air box, SAB, and I'm gonna do a video, I'm moving them to a larger jar, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. All you do is simply put your syringe down in the liquid mycelium and you just pull it up. And then I have these, these syringe holes in the top and also for airflow, air exchange. So you just put the syringe in the top and that's how you inoculate these WBS jars. So again, really easy actually to move out of spores into mycelium. And for us, it makes it really easy because what happens is you have all these liquid mycelium, liquid cultures, slurries, whatever it is. And then again, when you're ready to grow, you just pop your syringe in, pull out your liquid mycelium, put it right into your grain, your WBS, and you immediately start colonizing. And not only start colonizing, you're colonizing what you really want. And when you're more advanced and you get really good at it, then you can start cloning your own mushrooms. So whatever mushrooms you feel like are your prized mushrooms or the bounty, the harvest, maybe the tastiest ones, the most beneficial ones, you clone those and you can replicate that and grow the very best of everything. Again, there's so many solutions and so many different techniques and ways. Much love, friends.